From the kid down the street to the friend watching TV and pretty much the entire Western world, we cannot seem to get enough of zombies in this current gaming and sci-fi culture, can we? So, why not toss out another zombie video game for the public to devour with undead glee, right? Enter Dying Light. A survival horror game developed by Techland, published by Warner Brothers Interactive Entertainment. It introduces us to a mostly abandoned, desolate universe overrun by what the game calls Eaters. This universe is the fictional city of Haran, where a few pockets of humans remain among the infected. Techland did a satisfactory job creating an open world with rich, mostly reddish, yellowish based color and personality during the day, and a mostly pitch black landscape at night. It's apparent to me that most of the attention was placed on nailing this dynamic down. I never saw much break up in 360 degree range of motion, running, movement of weapons, small details, all good. The parkour system isn't bad either, but it takes a little time to master if you're playing on a console. For example, for me, my console of choice is the PlayStation 4, so the jump button for us is on the front trigger, R1. It's an atypical selection to leap compared to the conventional Green, top thumb buttons. Antenna. From what I could see, that is unchangeable, so you either deal with that or that's it. PC gamers just ignore everything I said. Looting and crafting items is a large complementary part of gameplay. From bodies to chests found on the ground or on rooftops, collect anything and everything to eventually sell or mash up into consumable items. Developers try their best to create a zombie hierarchy in size and strength running into the oversized undead once in a while, ranking up. The higher you go, the more great junk is available at the shops and trades and provides more blueprints to craft gadgets and abilities. The further you go, you begin to assemble your own special weapons beyond the standard baseball bats, hammers, wrenches, and other objects to smash zombies. There's really nothing that stands out to me and says, this is different. You could say the difference factors in when day turns to night. Zombies are stronger, move much faster in the darkness, and quite frankly, the game is more fun and challenging during the overnight hours. And scarier, just do not F with them at night. You will die pretty much instantly. Combat style and systems, I tend to go for realism, so this style is up my alley. Your fatigue sets in rather quickly as you attack and need to back off to regain strength, so you're not given the green light to smash away with no consequences. Your weapons also lose their effectiveness after several smashes and need repair. That's good too because, yeah, hey, the wear and tear gets to you, right? You gotta tape those things up, so it's real. Co-op multiplayer modes available to fight alongside or against friends and gamers. I tried out the Be the Zombie mode. Allows a player to, yes, be a zombie. Running around attacking fellow humans, infiltrating other people's games. So what did I not like about the game specifically? Now for the bad news. First off, take a look at your screen here. Upper right hand corner, see that hold button to skip? I was so annoyed by that. I can't get rid of it. I tried, I looked for ways, I just could not get rid of it during the cutscenes. It's distracting, it shouldn't be there. In some scenes you can get rid of it, but it's not consistent. I need to get it off the screen. Okay, I get it. I can hit a button to skip the screen. I don't need it up there the whole time. I don't need it up there the whole time distracting me from what the guy or girl is saying to me during the scene. Eesh. Annoying. The multiplayer gameplay. Like we said before, Be the Zombie is a part of it. It provides a different perspective, but I didn't find myself playing it much and did not find it to be innovative or fresh enough to catch my attention. Some of the missions and objectives were extremely confusing. For example, in the Mother's Day mission, I found myself spending way too much time beating my brains out about how to do a simple thing like entering a building to retrieve items. Now look, it's Techland's attempt to have you think outside the box to achieve your goals, but perhaps the goal is too unattainable for some gamers who would end up tossing the title aside and never returning. In this day and age, yes, you can look up a walkthrough and find the solution, there's always that, but you don't really want to do that. There's a real fine line that developers walk between easy and difficulty of games, and Techland didn't really do that great of a job. What I'd like to do now is rate games within smaller categories and give you my simple final answer to the Hamlet-esque question of to buy or not to buy. Four categories, ranking from poor to fair to good and excellence. Trying to avoid numbers because everybody does that. First category, visual presentation. 
I say it's good. Your movement, the open world surroundings, show detail that has Techland's care and attention stamped on the entire universe, so I give them credit for that. Technical gameplay, also good. Fighting zombies, the parkour system, you're dashing and climbing around the city. Narrative, hmm. I give that a fair grade, and I'll explain why. I found it to be too stereotypical and too easy to figure out. Haven't I seen you somewhere before? Revisiting. This is a category that essentially means, following my game session, do I keep wanting to come back for more the next day? On that front, I give it an excellent grade. Despite all the shortcomings, which I consider to be mostly minor, and despite a tale without strong teeth, I did keep coming back. There are some games you play for a defined period of time and never return, but Dying Light has an undefinable quality that I just cannot pinpoint that draws the curious gamer out of me. But the main problem facing this game is the saturation of the post-apocalyptic media market. What do I mean by that? It means that we are bombarded with zombie games, TV shows, books, stories about killer viruses. So if you're going down that road into that field, you need to do something that stands out. And it's not easy to achieve because the genre is formulaic. In other words, how much more can you veer from a story of fighting the undead in a barren universe? With that, I call it a good game. Yeah, I would buy it, but when the price goes down. Some games just are not worth 50 or 60 bucks. Developers here might not be happy to hear that, but it's the way I feel. When you see the price drop and then drop the cash on it, you will find moderate disappointment, but the world is solid enough whetting your appetite for zombie gaming. This falls short in areas like story, originality, and captivating multiplayer, but we do have a relatively cohesive, be it predictable, and simplistic core campaign that is worth the discounted cash, not the full price. So remember, Dying Light, equals descending cost. The price drops to say 35 bucks, then go get it. Don't let the undead dupe you into the full price. Just take my advice, game on.